This is the third video in the series of the Martley Pool College uh, Ladies Football Club database. Just a reminder of where we left off in the previous video. We went through a design phase using entity relationship diagrams and we ended up with an ERD that looked like this. Just a reminder why we go through this process. One, we need to carefully plan and design the database and make sure that we've got each attribute just stored once. So one of the benefits of a relational database is that we're not having duplicate data. That means we're storing data just in one place. So what we're going to do is for each of these entities, we're going to create a table and enter the attributes which will become the fields in the table and we'll set up the relationships between the tables as well and then we can complete activity one. Before we start creating the tables in Microsoft Access we need to have an idea of what data types we're going to use and what I've done is I've just written on the sample data the data types that I'm going to use so for example player ID that can be auto number because the players are consecutively numbered from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If there are any gaps in these numbers, you would probably better advise to use number. Player surname, short text, look for the longest one. I've put this down as 10, it could be 12 for example. Player initial, short text 1. Position ID, again auto number, it's 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, it's consecutively numbered, so we can use auto the number. Player position yellow cards, number, player, sorry, position name, short text 15. Again, just look for the longest one to decide how long the field needs to be. Player date of birth, we can use date and time, short date. Player position goals, again, number. Player position substitutions, number. Mentor surname, short text, again, look for the longest one. Uh, I've chosen 10 as a rounded number. Player position rating, number. And then the mentor ID, again, that can be auto number because we're just consecutively numbered, one, two. Let's just recap on what we've got to do for this activity, the database relationship screen prints. Make sure you save your documents in your folder ready for submission using the formats and naming conventions indicated. So previously in the paper, it asked you to create a folder and name it in a certain way. And it also tells you the names that you need to give to your files just remind you in each task what the file name should be and you're saving these as a PDF. So activity one, database relationship screen print. It recommends 45 minutes. You can probably get this done quicker. Have you spent time on that design phase, getting it just right? Because that's good preparation before you start on Microsoft Access. Split the data extract provided in figure one. We've done that already. And create an efficient database structure. That one minimizes data duplication. Remember what I said, we're aiming to store each piece of data just once in our database. Accepts the data provided, so we need to make sure we're going to use appropriate data types. Users recognize naming conventions, so things like using the prefix TBL in front of your table name and also having a standard format for your field names, as in the capitalization of letters in the field name, and then ensures data integrity. Now, we've done this already by, in our design, when we set up those foreign keys. What it means is when we're ensuring data integrity, a couple of things, but in this case, it means we can't, for example, create a mentor in a, a player record for a mentor that doesn't exist in the database. Or for example, we can't create a player position record for a player that doesn't already exist in the database. And that's basically what data integrity is. We need to ensure that we use all and only the fields in figure one. Well, again, we've dealt with that in the design. Uh, just let me remind you, we're only allowed to use 
the attributes in the sample data. So, for example, in this new entity player position, we've got the key player ID and position ID together make up that primary key. We couldn't, for example, introduce a new attribute to be the primary key for this entity. We've got to use what's there or uh, provided for us. So we're asked to screen print the database relationships. So we'll show that in a minute. And just make sure you save your database relationship screen print as a PDF in your folder for submission. And make sure you use this file name. So activity one underscore your registration number, which will be provided by your school or college, or surname and the first letter of your first name. If I spent 45 minutes, you probably get through this quicker because we've spent quite a lot of time getting the design right and doing that preparation before we get onto Microsoft Access. Again, a quick reminder, the order in which you create these tables is important. Always start with the tables which have no foreign keys, so that's mentor and position. Then do the table with one foreign key, that's player. And then the last table to create is player position, and that's got two foreign keys. Well, now in Access, I've created a blank database and we're ready to start creating that mentor table first. Go into Design View, we'll call this TBL Mentor. And the first field is the Mentor ID. And we said that would be auto number and the mentor surname. We said that would be short text. Make sure you change the size of any short text fields, something appropriate. And I think we said this could be, let's just have a look, 10. Make sure you save your tables as you're going along. And I use close them down as well. So the next table we're going to create is going to be position. We'll call that TBL position. And the first field is position ID. We said that could be auto number. The second field is position name, and that is short text, and the size is 15. The next table to create is the one with one foreign key, and that's the player table. The key is the player ID. And that's auto number. We've then got the mentor ID. Now, mentor ID in its home table is auto number. It can't be auto number again. It's got to match in terms of data type and size. Auto number is a long integer, so this has got to be number and long integer. I'll come back to setting up the relationship with mentor in a minute. Then we've got the player surname, and that will be short text, and the size is 10. Then we've got the player initial. That's short text and size 1. And then finally we've got the player date of birth. And that would be date and time. And I'll set this up here with the format of short date. Let's come back to that uh, mentor ID now and set up the relationship with mentor. If we click on the data type and the down arrow and select lookup wizard. I want the lookup field to get the values from another table and next. 
We want TBL Mentor and Next. We want the Mentor ID as a selected field and Next. We don't need any sorting. And it shows us we're going to have a column with, for Mentor ID. There's nothing in it at the minute with no data in the database. That's OK. It will populate with data when we actually enter the data in the tables. Now, we always enable data integrity and use cascade delete as well. And that forces that one-to-many relationship between mentor and player. And it means that you won't be able to put a player record without a valid mentor ID in it. You can't, for example, put in a mentor ID that doesn't exist in that mentor table and finish. Always answer yes to saving. And that's complete at TBL player. Make sure you save it and yes, save it again and close. And the final table we're going to create is one with two foreign keys and that's player position. So I'm just going to key in the fields and then I'll deal with the keys in a minute. So we've got a player ID. Now player ID is auto number in its home table, so therefore it's got to be number in this one. We've got position ID. Again, that's auto number in its home table, so it's going to be number in this table. We've got player position substitutions, that's going to be number. Player position goals, again, number. We've got player position rating, number. And finally, player position yellow card. And again, that's number. OK, I'm just going to come back now to the keys of this table. So notice we've got the key icon just opposite player ID. We need to make sure that both the player ID and the position ID are the primary key for this table. So the first thing to do is to get rid of this key for player ID. So I've just highlighted the column and click on primary key. And it's taken the icon off. I'm now going to highlight both rows and then click on primary key. And you can see now we've got the key icon against player ID and position ID. And that means now that both of those fields make up the primary key in this table. Now, the next thing to do is set up the relationships. If we click on player ID first and click on the down arrow and select lookup wizard. We want the lookup field to get the values from another table. This time it's TBL player because we want the player ID. Player ID is selected field. No sorting. Again, we've got a column, nothing in it with no data in. It will populate when we put the data in and enable data integrity and cascade delete. We need to do the same for the position ID. Next thing we need to do now is just pop into database tools, go into relationships, and this is the screen print that we're going to take for this activity. But let's just check it before we go any further. We've got a player, TBL player, player ID, key field, and that has a one-to-many relationship with TBL player position, again using player ID. A mentor 
has a one-to-many relationship with player using mentor ID as the primary key in TBL mentor and mentor ID as the foreign key in TBL player. Position has a one-to-many relationship with TBL player position. Position ID is the primary key and it creates a relationship with a foreign key position ID in TBL player position. Just a reminder then that player ID and position ID together make up the primary key for TBL player position, but player ID is a foreign key and links to TBL player and position ID is a foreign key as well and that allows us to create the relationship with TBL position. The next thing will be to take a screen print of this and paste it into a Word document. Make sure you save it as a PDF and save it in the folder that you've created using the file name stated in the activity. In the next video I will be covering activity 2 and that's creating validation.